All right, welcome back to Faith Family, uh, United Church of Christ Bible Study. We are doing a study in Luke, and we are at what I'm calling chapter or, uh, Lesson 6. And, uh, of course, each of these lessons, lessons will be broken down into, into separate parts. But on Lesson 6, we are in uh, Luke chapter 9, starting at verse 10, the feeding of the 5,000. So... Um, Feeding of the 5,000 is also found in Mark and, uh, and Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 6, 30, and Matthew chapter um, 14, 13. Um, on their return, the apostles told Jesus all that they had done. Remember, uh, last week we talked about that the apostles were sent out by, by Jesus, and they went out to do miracles and, and uh, heal the sick, and now they're coming back. And they told Jesus all that they had done. Uh, he took them with him and withdrew privately to a city called Bethsaida. When the crowds found out about it, they followed him and he welcomed them. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. The day was drawing to a close and the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away, so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside uh, to lodge and get provisions, for we are here in this deserted place. But they said to him, You give them something to eat. They said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all of these people. For there is about 5,000 men. And, uh, and he said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of 50 each. They did so and made them all sit down. And taking up the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up into heaven and blessed it and broke them and gave them to his disciples and set before the, to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. What was left over gathered, was gathered up 12 baskets of broken pieces. Wow. Interesting. So we want to go to the very first part of this. Does anybody have any questions about this before I start? It's, it's a certain remark that it's, it's, um, it's 10 groups. 10 groups, yeah. 10 commandments, 10 groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting, it says 50 here. Well, if they're in groups 50 of 50, people, 5, if you divide it, it divides to 5,000 people oh, I see into what you're 50 saying. Yeah. groups of 50, and there are 10 groups. Um, Don't know if it's any significance, but it's there. <laughs> so let, let's let's look back to the, what, we, what we read from, from last week. And you remember that the disciples were sent out, and do you remember they said, Jesus told them to take nothing with them? Mm -hmm. And they were to proclaim the good news. Um, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt or extra tunic. So now they just returned from this. Jesus takes them aside to talk to them. The crowd says, oh no, you're a superstar. We're going to come <laughs> wherever you are. And he comes to them, and <clears throat> Jesus welcomes them. And then, um, time's getting late, and the disciples say, let's send them away so they can get the stuff. And Jesus says, you give them. Wait a minute, <laughs> didn't we just see that? They, they took nothing with them and they just returned. It's not like they gathered stuff while they were on their journey. Maybe they did, but still, they, they were sent out with nothing and now they, they returned. So, and they did, obviously they didn't have anything, so how were they going to take care of the crowd? What do you think about that? He does provide. He does provide. Yeah. I think he was trying to get them accustomed to the to having faith and believing that when they um, when there's a need that they have the means to solve it to fix it, to to make it happen. Yes. 
You try and empower them, in other words. Yeah. Try, yeah, empower them. You, know, you make it happen. You know? Why are you always coming to me? You could do those too. Well, is it that too, you know? <laughs> and they, their idea was to, to send them away. But Jesus already says he welcomed them. So, and he spoke to them about the kingdom. Okay. I, think that's a, I think that's a key for us, is this idea of kingdom living. And, and kingdom living doesn't send people away. Kingdom living brings people in and takes care of them. And I think that's, that's a big part of this. Um, don't send people away just because you don't have. Gather the kingdom together and see if the kingdom can take care of this person. Okay. They said that we have no more than five loaves and two fish. So here, here's what I want to ask about this. This is a little different. Was this a miracle? The way you look at it, it's a miracle. Getting, if you look at it and you say, Jesus prayed and the food was multiplied. If you look at it and you say, the people who traveled with their families and they put together their resources and thought of others first, that's a miracle too. Either way, they were transformed by what they heard that Maybe day. Maybe transformed, but I think so. It's not just a story. It, it, it's an unusual story. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle story. Mm -hmm. it, and it's been called so for thousands of years. I think I think that's 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 something. If if you think of it as a miracle, as you know, Jesus prayed, and all of a sudden there was, you know, two fish for every person, and and yada yada yada. It just automatically appeared, you know, or if like Cindy said that he prayed about it and the people were transformed to be sharing. You know, hey, I've got an extra fish. So here you got a family that's got two extra fish and an extra half a loaf of bread. So they shared that with the people that didn't. You know, and it's the idea, that idea of kingdom once again. Mm -hmm. We take care of each other. Um, so, but that, like Cindy pointed out as well, you know, that's a, that's, um, a miracle in the fact that people are transformed. Imagine if you imagine, become, imagine if you got up today and you said to everybody, give everything you have. Clear out your bank accounts. Give everything you have so that every if there were five thousand people here, so that every person here could have what you have. How many people would do that? So when you think about it, it's the same thing because then that may have been all they had. They don't know how tomorrow they're going to feed their family. It could have been the same kind of, and the fact that people still, if, you know, it's still a miracle. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, people I mean, believed it. What would make it not a miracle? Oh, I know. That's a, <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, I, what I was trying to point out was, you know, the, the idea of this, this uh, if you want to use the word magic. This, this appearing of the food all of a sudden. Um, and yeah, it did appear. It, appear, it appeared from, you know... Wherever. For, from, from other people who, who shared. So it, it we kind don't of, know where it came from. It, it could have, it could have been. Exactly. Way. <laughs> exactly. So, so but, but... I don't think that's important. Me, me, <laughs> at, me as someone that believes in the kingdom mm -hmm. and believe that the people shared what they had, and like I said, that can be considered a miracle as well. But I don't have a problem with the people saying that, no, Jesus prayed and he made it appear. You know, I don't have a problem with that. He um, gave thanks. Huh? Yeah. He gave thanks and broke the bread. And, and I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. But on the, on the reverse of that, they would say that I'm not a believer because I don't see that happening the way they, they interpret right. that. The, the Bible doesn't tell us how it happened. It, just it tells, tells you what did. Jesus did and the fact that it did happen. And here's the outcome. It did happen. And I think the point is that, that if we have faith in God, 
He will provide. That's that's the message, and and that's what you said when, when we started out. Uh, I think I think this comes from from experience. You know, uh, I, when I was when I was in Kentucky, I was I was preaching at a church of, of well nine of seventeen people. Okay. So that's counting myself, my wife, and our four kids at the time. So, so there was a church of nine people. And uh, I would preach in the morning. And then I'd have 30 kids in the evening, Sunday evening, for a youth group. And uh, they paid me $50 a week. <laughs> and needless to say, you know, I just said I had four kids. And I was going to college. And I... I Man, there was times when we had nothing, and you know we were like, I don't know what's going to happen, and things would show up, you know. Exactly. People, an envelope would show up in my Bible when I was driving, you know, when I, after I left the church. It's like there's an envelope in my Bible. How did this get there? And it would there'd be money in it. Uh, a sack of fifty pound bag of potatoes showed up on our doorstep one morning. <laughs> um, just different things like that, and that's the, that's the idea. Is that a miracle? Yeah, because it's through faith. It, it something happened, and I think that's the main. Something happened here and, and that was just he completely unusual. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, what it was, but we need to we need to identify that something happened. There was an experience, and the people experienced this. And so it, it, it's even more vague than that. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's not described what happened. It, what Jesus did is is there, but how the rest happens is not described. And I think that's on purpose. Well, I because it's giving us the message. Why did your envelope show up in your in your Bible? I mean, you don't know. Right. I think the most important fact is the most overlooked part of this is the extra that was left over. Yeah. So if you're at, you know, and that you have to remember just before that, Jesus asked them to go without anything. Mm -hmm. Don't prepare for tomorrow, which is something as humans, we just, it's almost impossible for us to do, to not think about tomorrow. How am I going to eat? Where am I going to live? What am I going to, you know, how am I going to provide? It's, it's literally impossible for people to live like that. So when Jesus asked them to do that, and they're like, oh, I don't know about this. Mm -hmm. So then he said, if you live like that, Guess what? There, will be, there tomorrow. will be enough for tomorrow. There'll be enough for the next for the week. That, that's that's, that's a good the, point. That's something that I think about this passage as well overlooked. We focus on the miracle, which is which is right, but the leftover was the miracle too. The the remnant was the miracle too. The provisions that God's not going to just provide for your needs today, but He's going to provide for tomorrow and the next day, and you just have to have the faith. To to do what. I, 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 I believe there's a key To word. live like that. And what is that called? Kingdom living. Kingdom li living. That's, that's, that's what I wanted to get. That's probably the most overlooked part of that whole story is that Jesus talked to them, spoke to them about the kingdom of God. And it's this hard is what This is what it means to live in. And you're going to have enough for tomorrow. You're going to have enough. You, you, there's abundance if you share it. And, and I think that's, that's the, the main focus of this. And, and that is a miracle if people can actually do that. Well, actually, just me, this is something I struggle with, not being in control of tomorrow, right? I yeah. just really, personally. So in a month where we've watched our entire savings drain because of every possible plumbing emergency you can think of, literally we here are to the end of the month. It's like, okay, and yesterday I was really struggling with it. Like, okay, what are, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? So this, was, this is a good lesson for me, too. It's like, okay, I just have faith that tomorrow we're going to get paid. <laughs> no, but that will be that rebuilding time. I think that's important and lesson for us to hear on a regular basis as we start to go through different things. I, I think we have to begin to realize that we've been living on kingdom time yeah. since the day we were born. Yeah. That everybody has been living on kingdom time since the creation of the earth. Mm -hmm. And it's no different. If you get in trouble, when one wants you're in trouble, you're still on kingdom time. Mm -hmm. 
if you don't believe in God, it doesn't matter. You are still on kingdom time. And I think uh, that's a nice segue out of this, this, mm -hmm. this thing. Is that we have to realize that, that the kingdom is around us and we are among it. Mm -hmm. We're in it. That's, yeah. Do we, do, we, do, we, do we live in the kingdom time or do we try to do it ourselves? No, oh, that, and that's you try to do it yourself. You're doing it wrong. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. But I think these lessons are important for us to hear and reread. I mean, I've been hearing this. I've been hearing about this story since I could probably before I can remember. You know, when you're in Sunday school or, or kitty catechism, they're telling you about the miracle of Jesus and the, and the loaf, five loaves and twelve fish, whatever. And it's a great story until it's not a story anymore. Until mm -hmm. it's and that, and a that's, dogma. Until it's a way of living until I, it's a you. personal tenet that you adopt into your life yeah i think that's that's why that's where i get the, at the point that the idea this is a story this is a story about magic and therefore we know that magic doesn't exist and therefore this is part of the, the fairy tale that christians believe in and mm -hmm. see you don't have to do that you don't yeah. have to fall into that because this isn't a story about magic or, or it's a story about kingdom living you see the difference there mm -hmm. you didn't say that magic doesn't exist as what <laughs> well that's what i'm saying that's what people of the world believe magic this is a magic story miracles are magic stories and fairy therefore tale. they're fairy tales i've literally well, been told even, that by people that, okay but even if they are even if they are yeah. a fairy tale what's it saying yeah that's exactly. the point I, I, mean, exactly. I don't have a problem with that yeah, they are a story yeah exactly and and then they're the yeah and the, the, to be able to, to to extrapolate the message from that story that's the important thing and not just write it off as as unimportant mm -hmm. because it's it's they believe that it couldn't have happened Here's where, here's where we can take this. So, you know, people say, oh, after Jesus and after the disciples and apostles, that, mag uh, that magic, that miracles ended. The miracles haven't ended. If we adopt this kind of mentality about life, you hear something, a story where a family lost everything they had and they started a GoFundMe and now they have more than they ever had before or they ever and needed. And they'll tell you, those that's people a tell miracle. you. That's yeah. a miracle. We because experienced the miracle. We can right? make miracles happen <clears throat> by treat it by, by kingdom living learning to live within our means and giving us the means to help others i think that's where we could you know as a society i'm not saying any individual but as a society we've gotten off track where we think we have to take care of us my family i gotta make sure my kids go to college which is important i'm not saying it's not important to save for important things but then we have come, we've fallen into this accumulation of things, you know, and not thinking about how we can help others. We're all guilty of, I, I know I am too. So it's like, if we can look at this and that's where the miracle comes when we have the faith to be like, okay, all right, let's take a deep breath. How can we make miracles happen again? By taking care of others. And we all here do a great job of that at this church, but yes. not in the world as a whole. I, I, I thought of that when I when I read this story. This is this is this is faith family. Yeah. This is faith family. We see when there's a need, everybody kind of steps in and, and makes sure it's taken care of. The need's taken care of. So so yeah, I, I I do I do that's one of the things that I've really and I've always loved since I've come to faith families. You you see that and uh, Every time that we come up, oh my gosh, what, what are we going to do? This this needs to be done. It gets done. It gets done. People, even with, even with small numbers, it's yep. amazing. But I think that's how we, we can say, we can refute that and say, no, there's still miracles to be done if we if we manifest it. And, and I, think, I think that's an important thing, to realize that people think this way. And by, by just coming back and saying, oh, you have no faith, that doesn't, but, but explaining it, to them in a way where you 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 know you take away the magic of it and say 
really don't like that word. I know, you know. I, 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 I don't, don't like, like that word at all. He <laughs> 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 throws everyone off the of course. <laughs> but, but that's what they call it. No, yeah. who's the they? I've never heard People anybody can, say to me that... Uh, and you've really? never been to a former communist country because they'll tell you flat out. Oh, I know. No, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about people I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, talking about non-believers. Yeah, non-believers. Non people oh, that just... Atheists. Well, I've right. never heard anybody tell, tell me magic, okay? I've, done, I've been to communist countries. But well, I, we, uh, I've literally not. had people tell me that... They're that using magic, magic in place of miracle. Okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah. That, that that's uh, but when we go to these I mean, that's people, not it, it's it, the magic is a word that turns you off because it's nothing there's nothing religious there's nothing it, 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 holy it's, it's, about it's, that word it's a trickery well the magic exists but it's 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 foolery right exactly yeah, that's, right. that's why and that's what they're saying uh, it, yeah it kind of throws you into that is what defensive mode and because that's let's say that they believe word. it is magic so if they say well that's magic that's just that's not real so what, what's the message it's still there. Just the point I mean, of argument. Folks, but but, the, but what I'm saying, saying is, if we, if we if we become uh, adamant about saying this is what happened, and you know, and and they're like, they don't want. But yet, if you talk to them instead, like Jesus did, you take the the conversation away from this this miracle that happened, and you take it and you put it in the context of this is what kingdom living is about, taking care of each other. That, that that's the message. That is there, and that focus puts them focused back onto the message, and not this thing that that distracts them. Right. And so that that's what I, that's what I'm getting at here is we need to we need to we need to take their distractions away from them so that they can see the message. Mm -hmm. Well, if you if 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 you if you look at this as an obstacle to overcome, to talk to a non-believer, maybe, but. Uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if Jesus prayed and baskets of food appeared from nowhere, or if people reached into their stores, their stores and brought out food. That doesn't matter. It, what matters is they were transformed by the message, and they decided that whatever happened, that everybody there was going to be filled. Yeah. How, right. Whatever it took. And, and there's going to be there's going to be a surplus. Right. At the end of the day, and you're still going to have. Yeah. Right. Enough for tomorrow. Pick some up and take them for tomorrow. Exactly. Okay, so moving on, moving on. Um, uh, Peter, oh, not you. This, thank goodness. <laughs> Peter's <laughs> declaration about Jesus. Okay, once Jesus was praying alone with only the disciples near him, uh, he asked them, Who do the crowd say I am? They answered, John the Baptist, but others, Elijah. And still others, that one of the ancient prophets has risen. He said to them, Who do you say that I am? Peter answered, The Messiah of God. <laughs> it's funny that you said that stuff about John, Elijah, because that's the same thing Herod said a few years ago. Exactly. <laughs> and, that, that, and we asked the question back then, does this does this mean that some people at this time in this culture believed in reincarnation? I asked it back then too. I think this is really, 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 really interesting because we all know Luke wrote this book after, after. Yeah. So when he comes back and he says what happened, and Peter says, "I he was the Messiah." Yeah, after, it might have been easy for him to say that, too. You have to think about the context of it. You well, know. And here, here's another thing. But he didn't think that when they, he cut off the ear and when no. he denied him. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, we all have doubts. He had the sword, he, you know, <laughs> probably a gladiator, you know, short sword. Yeah. But he cut off the ear of the people that come to arrest Jesus, you know, and all this stuff. And when, when Jesus was finally, they saw that, Peter saw that Jesus was going to be crucified or at least killed, then, then he, he, you know, he didn't want anything to do with him at that point until he was risen. And you think about that, and here he says he is the Messiah. Okay, so, anybody been watching the new Dunes? No, <laughs> so, just you. Just me. <laughs> and they call, they call him the Messiah, and there's movies out. There shows out, TV shows, the Messiah. And we think of the Messiah as someone like Jesus. 
but what about before there was Jesus? Yeah. What did they think the Messiah was? David, king, mighty, mighty forceful. warrior. A mighty warrior that's going to lead. They had a different concept. Yeah, they did, because what, what, what you have to understand, Messiah, all that it means is anointed one. The one that's got the oil poured on their head, and they're, they're chosen for. And like David. from the Old Testament, there's only two people, two peoples that were anointed. They were the warrior kings and the prophets. prophets. Those were the ones that were anointed. And so at this time, the Jews are thinking, a warrior prophet. <laughs> well, because that's what they had been conditioned, conditioned to believe. believe. Right. Because the, they think that the land is what's holy. Mm -hmm. They think that the land is what's holy. They don't realize that the people are yes. what's important. Yes. So that's where Jesus' whole persona was so radical and to them because they didn't understand. Yeah. Well, they, had, they wanted God to save them. Mm -hmm. And they, they were told by the prophets, well, not he's going to mm -hmm. do it. But they, they had no concept of how. It was going to happen, mm -hmm. which is typical of God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you do? And typical of man. Well, you, you, you look to you look to the world. How's the, the world power. going? When, yeah. when, before you know, in the time of Samuel, and when they had made Saul the first king, what was um, what was their rationale? We want a king to be like other nations. They looked around and they say, this is what we want instead of what we have. Well, God didn't want them to have it. No, no, no. Matter of fact, Samuel said, no, this is wrong. I don't know wrong. why he gave in. Well, the interesting story about that. <laughs> <laughs> he caved. But did he? But, I did. You know, but raise, you know, you look at your children, you raise your children, right? They want it, they want it, they want it, they want it. You're not going to like it. You, they want it, they want it, they want it. Okay, fine, take it. And then the next thing you know, they're putting they're putting the big powder of cinnamon in their milk, and they take a drink of it, and they, oh, that's disgusting. It's like, well, <laughs> I tell you, now you have to or, live with the consequences. Or they, or they got their they got their spoon in the can of of Nesquik, and they're, they're they're like they're like, no, you don't want to die. Um, but but that's that's your that's the answer to what you were asking. Cinnamon you know? and milk. Yes. <laughs> cinnamon and milk. No. Be careful God, what you ask for. God said. God said. You think you want this so bad? You're going to learn a lesson the hard way. Then. You think so? I think so. I think so. I, 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 I've always I've always wondered because it it's it's it changes the whole Bible. Flips it over. Yeah. I I I, I prefer being a historian to think that. They elected the kings and, and because they were they were men. We weren't thinking kingdom of God on earth. We were thinking of my kingdom on earth. Yes. We were thinking of ourselves. Ourselves. And the kings were in history. And so they were in history, so we put them in the story. And it all evolves as, as it's telling the story, but they use what's right. And they are they yeah. They ordain that from God. Yeah. I read that too, but I but I do think too that, you know, we we want to put God in a box and think He's linear, but you know, God's not linear. He doesn't think like we do. He's thinking big picture, bigger picture than we can think of too. And what the outcome of that, we still don't know, right? Like we don't know yet what the end is going to be. So what it takes to get there, to us is a timeline, but to God is there is no time, right? No. No, no, there is no timeline for that. So when we start looking, I mean, I'm the same way. Like, I feel like, does it, does it matter that God, if God ordained the, the, the you know, he said, okay, I'll give you a king. Or if they if they just elected kings and then said, oh, God told us this is what he wanted us to do. At the end, this, we are where we are, regardless of what, what caused it to happen. God appears to use what he's given. Right. But he appears that way. Whether he is generating that, right, or or or, or 
we are generating it? That's another question. <laughs> that's a good point. It's a whole Bible study on its own. That's that's the whole the whole is it is it uh, predestination or free will? Well, I wasn't talking predestination. <laughs> well, but, 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 that, but that is that that is where it comes down to, and and the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> because it, what 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 is predestined by God, but yet. It looks like free will to us because we're in that linear time frame. We're in that, that, that we, we're here, and yeah. you realize that from here, um, from right now, I, I can't say right now because now it's in the past. <laughs> <laughs> so every, every second moves forward. And so to us, it looks like we're making the decisions. That, but God's like, well, I already know what you're going to do because He can see the future, because God can see the future. So. Makes your head spin. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to, to mention here, um, um, this idea of the Christ, um, and I say Christ, but you know, what does your Bible say? The Messiah, say the Messiah, Messiah of God. Uh, Christ of God. It Yours says Christ. Christ. God. Yours says Christ. Good, because the word is Christos. It is that's the Greek word for anointed one, but yet in so many of the the Bibles. They want to translate that to Messiah, to give it more of a Jewish flavor, I guess. I don't know why they do that. That's what mine says. Messiah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. It's, but, it's, but, but, you said, isn't it horrible when your words come back to haunt you? But you said one day in a conversation I heard uh, that the name Jesus was the human Son of God here on earth, mm -hmm. and that the name Christ was the divine, uh, which is uh, in the green. It was, and there was, so they were determining he was both human and divine. And in this case, he's calling him divine. If he's, when Peter reports this, he, he's risen from the dead. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, Luke's living after, yeah, after yeah. the whole story's been presented. So, I don't know. We don't have time to get into the next, which deserves its own lesson. But yeah, right it now. talks about Jesus told them to keep it quiet, not to tell anybody. Yeah, yeah we'll get to that next week. That's but, just a, that's just a, that's just like I've always but, questioned that. But what 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 what, um, to live. what Bill said is important, you know, yeah. because you are the the Christ, right? You are the anointed one of God. In other words, God has chosen you for this, and He's anointed you. And when anointing is, that's like a calling, and you will do this for God. And so, this this idea that Jesus was His human name, and yet the Christ, that's that's His divine purpose, and, and uh, that that's good. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. So Jesus 